Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about confocal microscopy and how we can use it to study the optical properties of carbon quantum dots. Confocal microscopy is an optical imaging technique that provides very high spatial resolution and contrast compared with the conventional wide field optical microscopy with additional advantages such as control over field depth, minimal background signature, and ability to collect serial optical sections from thick specimens. For example, here you can see the beautiful fibroblast skin cells that I have captured using a fluorescence confocal microscope. Before we do the experiment for intracellular sensing ability of carbon quantum dots, let's look at the optical properties of our synthesized carbon quantum dots. I'm pretty sure you all know about the excitation and emission mechanism of the fluorescence materials. Briefly, a fluorescence molecule can be excited to a higher vibrational energy state with a light source. This excitation is most efficient at the optimal excitation wavelength of the fluorophore, which most often also corresponds to the absorption maximum. After this process of single photon absorption, the molecule quickly relaxes without radiation to the lowest vibrational energy level of S1. During the next transition, the molecule falls back into the ground state either by non-radiative decay or by spontaneous emission. In the first case, energy is released in the form of heat. In the second, by releasing energy in the form of a photon. Since energy has been lost during the process due to the vibrational relaxation step, the emitted fluorescence probe has a lower energy than the excitation photon, which leads to a redshift of the emission profile relative to the excitation profile, as you can see in the figure B. So, we add carbon quantum dot solution on the cover slip, and we try to focus on the sample using the microscope. After that, we expose this carbon quantum dots to the laser of the microscope using two photons to excite them and collect their emission spectrum. As you noticed, I just mentioned using two photons to excite the carbon quantum dots. What I was explaining about the excitation and emission mechanism was based on using only one photon to excite the electrons. But here, I'm going to use two photons to excite carbon quantum dots. Most of the fluorescence nanomaterials can be excited using single photon. However, having a material with excellent ability to absorb two photon is of great importance. What are the benefits of using two photon to excite the probe? As you can see in the right side of the image, we are actually using a photon to excite the electron in the ground state to halfway through of the full excitation. And the second photon will help the electron to be completely excited. In this matter, we have photons with lower energy to excite our carbon quantum dots in comparison with single photon. Therefore, we have less beam damages to the cells and tissues during the imaging. And also, we can increase the penetration depth and resolution of images. I have some examples here to make it more clear and show the differences between single photon and two photon excitation. Here, the carbon quantum dots have been incubated to the pig skin tissue for imaging purposes. The fluorescence images of the tissue excited by single photon show the weak fluorescence signals with a maximum penetration depth of 200 micrometer. The use of visible light excitation causes strong scattering which limits the penetration depth in the tissue. Next, we use two photon excitation and as you can see, the penetration depth was increased up to 100 micrometer with higher resolution compared with the single photon excitation. So here I have shown the differences between using single photon and two photon to excite the fluorescence material and the ability of these probes for bioimaging which gives us the possibilities to determine and visualize the tissue structure. Oh, we got a little bit of track. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, we wanted to see the synthesized carbon quantum dots optical properties under the microscope. We have our sample on the microscope here. First, we wanted to see which excitation wavelength we should use to excite the carbon quantum dots. To find the best two photon excitation wavelength, we will run photoluminescence excitation on the microscope, which will give us the best excitation wavelength to excite the carbon quantum dots. As it shows here, the result is 740 nanometer. It means at 740 nanometer, we have the maximum absorption and the highest emission intensity. 
Okay, so we are exciting our probe with 740 nanometer, and here we collect the emission of the carbon quantum dots, which has the maximum emission peak at around 460 nanometer. Now, I can show you how suitable the carbon quantum dots are for cell imaging. I cultured some cells and seeded them on a small dish for cell imaging. You will see the exact process of seeding the cells on the dishes in the next section. I choose my ideal objective and try to focus on the cells. Then we work on the computer connected to the microscope. In the first place, we try to take the bright field images of the cells. Bright field microscopy is the simplest of all optical microscopy illumination techniques. Bright field microscopy relies on the differences in absorption of light due to the differences in densities between various parts of the sample, which for our purposes is a cell. Because of this, bright field microscopy is not great when you want to see your cell in detail. So let's turn on the laser of the microscope to do fluorescence imaging and to check if we can see more details in the structure or not. But we can't see anything in the cells and all is black and dark. So it means that when we have cells only, there is no fluorescence coming from the cells. And the only technique to use is the bright field technique which doesn't give us the detail we need. Next, we add the carbon quantum dots to the cells media and the cells will uptake them. Okay, I have put the new prepared dish on the microscope and adjust the objective and laser on the sample. Oh wow, that's amazing, right? Now you can see the strong fluorescence of the cells after incubation with carbon quantum dots which makes us able to see the details of the cells. A Z-stack image, which is the images of the section of the cells, was collected to exactly locate the Z-position of the carbon quantum dots within the cells. The fluorescence dot can be seen within the cell cytoplasm by visualizing them on the Z-axis from the bottom to the top level of the cells, which is from 0 to 27 micrometer. So we can confirm that the carbon quantum dots penetrated inside the cell cytoplasm rather than being bound or absorbed on the cell surface. So now we know how to make carbon quantum dots, how to find the particle size distribution, characterize their optical properties, and their application for cell and tissue imaging. Okay, now let's go see how JJ will prepare our sample for the cell studies. Hi, I'm JJ, and now I'll be showing you how to use the carbon quantum dots that we just synthesized to introduce them into cells as a biosensor to sense ferric ions in the cells. Okay, so first of all, we need to culture the cells. We are using a laminar flow hood as we need to create a sterile environment for cell culture experiments to avoid contamination. As you know, cell culture is the process by which cells are grown under control conditions generally outside of their natural environment. We have cultured the cells for the past seven days and now they are ready for our experiment. Here, you can see the culture media in pink color which have the cells suspended in the media. A culture medium is composed of a combination of amino acids, vitamins, inorganic salts, glucose, and serum to provide energy, proteins and growth factors for cell attachment and growth. Okay, now we are going to use these cells for our experiments. That's right, we are using these cells for intracellular ferric ion sensing using carbon quantum dots as a biosensor. First of all, we need different culture dishes to make our samples. You will see why we need different dishes later. JJ will transfer one mil of the media containing the cells to each dish and make sure the media covers the entire bottom surface of the dishes and put the lid back on. Next, the prepared dishes will transfer to an incubator. The CO2 incubator is an essential piece of lab equipment for anyone doing cell culture work. It creates a contamination-free environment for cells while maintaining constant temperature, humidity, oxygen, and carbon dioxide levels. We leave the samples in the incubator for 24 hours. During this time, the cells will attach to the bottom surface of the dishes. Okay, it has been 24 hours and the cells have attached to the bottom surface of the dishes. Let's go to the next step of our experiment. We take out the media and discard it in the bleach. 
The bleach decontaminates waste medium before disposal. We have prepared fresh media for the cells. This media contains a specific concentration of carbon quantum dots. In other words, we mix the carbon quantum dots with the media used to culture the cells. Now we are transferring one mil of the media containing carbon quantum dots to all the dishes. Due to the great properties of the carbon quantum dots, such as rapid cellular uptake, they will be taken up by the cells when we put the dishes back into the incubator and wait for another 24 hours. We have waited for another 24 hours. JJ will take the dishes out of the incubator and place them in the hood. Now we have the cells attached to the bottom surface of the dishes which have been incubated with carbon quantum dots. As you can see here, we have made a solution of the ferric ions in this container as the stock. Now JJ will transfer different volume of the ferric ions to each dish except two dishes which are the control samples. So we have a dish which is cells and carbon quantum dots with no ferric ions and then the dishes with cells and carbon quantum dots with ferric ions added from low to high concentration respectively. Now we leave the cells for 15 minutes to make sure the ferric ions have been taken up by the cells. Now JJ will remove the media and this time we are going to fix the cells by addition of one mil fixative to each dish. The broad objective of tissue fixation is to preserve cells and tissue components in a lifelike state. In this case, the fixative is 80% ethanol. We add 80% ethanol to dishes and wait for 15 minutes. We remove the fixative from all the dishes. Now we have fixed cells attached to the bottom surface of the dish. Instead of media, we add one mil of PBS buffer to each dish this time. Thank you JJ for making our beautiful samples. Okay, now I think our samples are almost ready to investigate the ability of carbon quantum dots for intracellular ferric ion sensing. But let me ask a question first. Why is ferric ion sensing important for us? As we all know, iron is a trace metal essential to ensure the survival of almost all organisms. But it can be dangerous. Under some specific conditions, we might have an imbalance of ferric ions in the cells. The imbalance of ferric ion concentration will lead to their reaction with reactive oxygen species and induce oxidative stress to the cells. This can give rise to chemical trigger that may contribute to development of certain diseases such as Parkinson's disease. Therefore, developing sensitive and cost-efficient techniques for the detection of ferric ions is important for the early diagnosis and monitoring of the disease. As we know, the carbon quantum dots are sensitive to metal ions. In our case, the carbon quantum dots we made are specifically sensitive to ferric ions due to their higher affinity to the functional groups on the surface of the carbon quantum dots. They will attach to surface of the carbon quantum dots and they quench their emission intensity. This reduction in emission intensity is proportional to ferric ion concentration. Here, I have exposed the carbon quantum dots to different concentration of ferric ion in PBS buffer in a separate experiment and studied the fluorescence spectra of these materials. You can see the emission intensity has been gradually decreased by increasing the ferric ion concentration. Therefore, taking advantage of our carbon quantum dot sensitivity to ferric ions we can use our carbon quantum dots to sense the ferric ion concentration in the cells. Now our samples are ready to investigate the ability of carbon quantum dots to sense ferric ion in the cells. 
Similar to the process of cell imaging before, here we put all the prepared dishes on the microscope separately and image the cells containing carbon quantum dots and different concentration of ferric ions. Okay, here I have finished capturing images of all of our samples and put them all together in this slide. I measured the average fluorescence of the cells to see how the ferric ions are affecting the fluorescence emission of the carbon quantum dots in the cells compared with the sample which only have carbon quantum dots. The result obviously showed that by increasing the ferric ion concentration, the fluorescence intensity of the carbon quantum dots is decreased. These results provide reliable quantitative measurements of average intracellular exogenous ferric ion using two-photon fluorescence imaging. So in this part, I showed the great importance of fluorescence carbon quantum dots as a biosensor for sensing ferric ions in the cells. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration.